Hello everyone and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In today's video, we will learn about the open die forging process and the production of essential mechanical tools such as wrenches, screwdrivers, and pliers. Besides, we will also explore extremely interesting activities in factories around the world. Ellen Motore pioneers the creation of generators, powering wind and hydroelectric plants, and propelling industrial machinery like fans and compressors. The hallmark of their craftsmanship lies in the uniqueness of each machine, planned, designed, and predominantly assembled by skilled hands. As exemplified by Christiana Mayer, who, having completed insulation cutting, intricately outfits stators with copper wire. Careful insertion of foil safeguards against wire damage, followed by manual coiling. Reinhard Schlegel, an adept technician, undertakes the installation process, welding and connecting the winding into the housing before bestowing the engine monitoring unit. Ellen delivers 3,000 machines every year. The production process of steel rods begins by heating the billets in a reheating furnace. High-pressure water jets are sprayed on the heated billets to clean off any oxidized parts, AKS, a steel manufacturing plant in Bangladesh has state of the art descaling devices that prevent spot cooling during the descaling process, as maintaining a constant temperature is crucial for producing quality steel bars. After descaling, the billets are sent to the rolling mill. AKS uses a rolling technology that combines horizontal and vertical stands. This unique feature allows them to roll the billets into desired shapes without continuous turning, which can harm the inner particles of the billet and reduce the strength of the steel bars. The combination of horizontal and vertical stands avoids this issue and increases the density of the material. The rolling mill at AKS consists of a roughing mill with a production line of 18 mills, ensuring the production of high-quality rods in the shortest possible time. The rolling process is followed by the thermomechanical treatment TMT, of the steel bars. This involves passing the heated bars through a high-speed cooling system, which creates temperature differences between the core and surface, resulting in layered steel bars known as DMT steel bars. The cooled steel bars are then transferred to a cooling bed, where they further solidify. AKS has the longest cooling bed in Bangladesh, measuring 120 meters. Once cooled, automated machines are used to bind the finished steel bars together for easy handling and transportation. At Pewik, the chain production process is a carefully orchestrated endeavor, recognizing that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. The journey begins with the wire, where cleanliness and precision are paramount. In the manufacturing of chains, nothing is left to chance. The length and bending of the wire are precisely defined, and each link is seamlessly joined to the next. The welding process raises the question, is there even such a thing as a weak link at Pewik? Every element undergoes an identical process, ensuring uniform quality. The result is an unforgettable experience for the customer, instilling confidence in the product. A trademark quality grade and an individual code signify the commitment to excellence. The heat treatment system at Pewig ignites true enthusiasm among connoisseurs, defining the toughness and resistance of each chain. Attention then turns to the surface, where chains are treated with techniques such as sandblasting, electro-galvanization, or environmentally friendly lacquering, giving each chain its distinctive final touch. 
Quality assurance continues with rigorous testing in the areas of bending and breaking, attested using a diamond stylus. As the chains bid farewell, high-quality packaging ensures safe and reliable shipment to every corner of the world. For Pewig, strength alone is not enough. It's about ensuring that Pewig Strong is synonymous with unparalleled quality and reliability. The new rolling mill at Vostalpine Groblik in Linz marks a transformative era after 57 years and 25 million tons of service from the old mill. After an astonishingly brief assembly time of just 31 days, the new rolling mill commenced operations and setting a world record for efficiency. This state-of-the-art facility is designed to meet future high-quality demands. A highly rigid mill stand with precision adjusting systems serves as the foundation for improved plate rolling. Thickness accuracy and flatness performance are enhanced through efficient work roll shifting, increasing rolling force from 5,000 to 8,000 tons. The unique drivetrain allows for high rolling torques, enabling substantial reductions per pass. The mill ensures optimal deformation, finest microstructure, and superior material properties, making it an investment in the future of plate production. It stands as a guarantee for high productivity and availability for decades to come. The Akural Tandem CNC press brake is a powerhouse when it comes to bending large format poles seamlessly combining advanced technology and robust engineering to achieve precise and efficient results. The process begins with the CNC front material feeding system, a critical element designed for optimal material positioning. With a bed length of 58 feet, this system ensures that large format poles are accurately and securely placed for bending. The 4 plus 1 axis configuration further refines the control over the material, allowing operators to manipulate it in multiple directions with precision. The integration of a light pole pusher system, complemented by conveyors, introduces automation into the material handling process, streamlining workflow and enhancing overall efficiency. Driving the entire operation are the two Dilem DA66T2D 3D controls, the brain of the press brake. These controls offer a user-friendly interface for programming and executing bending sequences. The 2D, 3D capabilities are particularly crucial when dealing with the complex geometries of large format poles. Operators can visualize and simulate bends before execution, ensuring that each bend meets the exact specifications. To address the challenges posed by the substantial size and weight of large format poles, the CNC crowning system comes into play. This system dynamically adjusts the position of the beam to compensate for any potential deflection, ensuring uniform bends across the entire length of the pole. It is a key factor in achieving the precision required for large-scale bending projects. The Hoerbeiger hydraulics and valves play a pivotal role in providing the necessary power and control to execute bends with utmost precision. This hydraulic system is finely tuned to handle the immense force required for bending large format poles while maintaining accuracy and repeatability. The machine's comprehensive set of upper, lower tooling adds a layer of versatility, allowing it to adapt to various pole diameters and profiles. This adaptability is essential when working on diverse projects that demand different bending specifications. With a towering height of 65 inches under the floor, the press brake accommodates the substantial dimensions of large format poles. The back gauge speed of 350 IPM, max X travel of 2,100 inches, distance between columns of 295 inches, beam stroke of 17.7 inches, and daylight of 49.2 inches collectively contribute to the machine's efficiency, enabling swift and accurate positioning of the material. Manufacturing process of wrenches, 
Yanni's Way, known for its complete range of high-quality wrenches, follows a meticulous manufacturing process to ensure the durability and performance of their products. Raw Material Jones Way wrenches are made from premium steel. The raw material is heated to 1,000 degrees Celsius to increase its overall strength and reduce potential stress concentrations. It is then elongated using a rolling machine. Forging The rolled steel is sent to the forging press. The forging process involves three die pressings. The first die presses out the general shape of the wrench. The second die presses the finished shape. And the third die cuts out the blank. Chemical grinding. After forging, the wrench blank undergoes preliminary chemical grinding. It is placed in a container with a chemical solution and ceramic stones that grind off the ragged edges, ensuring a smooth surface. Polishing. For Jonesway W26 mirror polished wrenches, the wrench blanks also undergo hand polishing to achieve a highly reflective surface finish. Stamping. Once the technician ensures the correct size, the wrench is placed on a press for stamping. A specially designed mold is used to stamp the Jonesway logo, size, and item number onto the wrench. The stamping process also fortifies the hardness and metal structure of the wrench. Heat treating. After stamping, the wrench goes through the heat treating process to maximize the strength and hardness of the metal. This step enhances the overall durability of the wrench. Sandblasting. Following heat treating, the wrench undergoes sandblasting to clean up the carbonized surface. This process removes any remaining impurities and enhances the effectiveness of subsequent surface treatments. Chemical grinding for mirror polished wrenches. For Jonesway W26 mirror polished wrenches, an additional round of chemical grinding is performed to achieve a finely polished finish. Open end grinding. The open end of the wrench goes through three grinding stations to ensure precise dimensions and a smooth surface. Cleaning. The technician cleans up any lubricant residue from the wrench and trims off sharp edges that may have resulted from the production process. This step ensures the wrench is free from any contaminants or potential hazards. Plating. The semi-finished product is then subjected to a plating process. Jonesway employs a specially designed plating technique that enables the plating material to be deposited on the tool surface more effectively, resulting in a perfect surface treatment. Testing. The entire batch of finished wrenches undergoes sample inspection conducted by a Jonesway professional quality control engineer. Packing. Once the finished products pass the quality inspection, they are ready to be packed for delivery.
The manufacturing process of a 24-pipe mill with Yoder cage forming is a sophisticated and multi-step procedure aimed at transforming raw steel coils into high-quality pipes. This intricate process, spanning from the entry section to the finishing line, requires precise coordination and advanced machinery. The initial steps take place in the entry section, where a coil car is utilized to transport steel coils to the uncoiler. The uncoiler plays a crucial role in unwinding the steel coil, allowing for further processing. To ensure stability during this operation, a hold-down roll is employed. Once the steel coil is unwound, the coil peeler comes into play, peeling the leading edge of the coil and facilitating a seamless transition for subsequent processing stages. The pinch leveler is responsible for straightening and leveling the steel strip, preparing it for the next steps in the manufacturing process. A crop shear is then employed to cut the leading edge of the strip, providing a clean starting point for the subsequent stages. The skewed conveyor transfers the leveled strip to the forming section, setting the foundation for the tube production process. The forming section is a critical part of the manufacturing process. It begins with the transition and breakdown stand, initiating the shaping process of the strip. The transition stand and breakdown stand further mold the strip into a tubular form while the edge bending stand refines the edges of the strip, ensuring precision in the tube's shape. The introduction of the Yoder cage forming technique occurs at the cage roll stand, where the strip is carefully shaped into a tubular structure. The computerized roll positioning system CRP, plays a vital role in this stage, ensuring accurate roll positioning for precise tube shaping. The fin pass stand follows, refining the tube shape to meet specific dimensional requirements and quality standards. The welding section is a pivotal stage in the manufacturing process. Here, the tube edges are joined using a high-frequency HF welder and squeeze roll stand. This combination applies high-frequency welding to create a secure bond, and the squeeze roll stand ensures proper compression for a strong weld. Following the welding process, the tube undergoes additional refinement. The inside bead cutter removes excess material from within the welded tube, while the outside bead cutter trims any external excess, contributing to the final product's precision. A scrap winder is employed to collect and manage the waste material generated during the welding process, enhancing the overall efficiency of the operation. Inline ultrasonic testing UST, is a critical step to check for weld integrity and identify any potential defects. Seam annealing follows, a process where the welded seam is heated to enhance its strength and durability. The pull-out stand comes into play after the welding and refining processes. 
Its function is to transfer the welded tube to the cooling section, where the tube undergoes a cooling process to set its shape. The cooling section includes both air cooling stands and water cooling stands, each contributing to the cooling process, ensuring the tube meets the required specifications and quality standards. Moving forward in the manufacturing process, the sizing section and cutoff section play crucial roles in refining the tube's dimensions. The sizing stand is responsible for shaping and sizing the tube, while the Turk's head further refines its shape, contributing to the overall precision of the final product. An inline marking machine is introduced to add identification markings to the tube, a necessary step for tracking and quality control purposes. The flying cutoff machine is a precision tool used to cut the tube to the desired length, ensuring accuracy in the final product. The pull-out roll stand then takes charge, transferring the cut tubes to the subsequent stages of the manufacturing process. The finishing line is the culmination of the manufacturing process, where the runout conveyor and coil skid are instrumental in moving finished tubes to various machines for additional processing. The finishing line itself consists of a series of machines designed to add the final touches to the tubes. An end-facing and chamfering machine prepares tube ends for further use, ensuring they meet the required specifications. The kick-in and receiver mechanisms facilitate efficient transfer, while the kick-out and roller conveyor systems direct finished tubes to the next stage of the process. Continuing down the finishing line, a hydrostatic tester is employed to assess the tubes for strength and integrity. This critical step ensures that the final product meets stringent quality standards.
An offline ultrasonic tester provides additional checks for defects and overall quality, enhancing the quality control measures in place. In some instances, a manual ultrasonic tester may be utilized for further ultrasonic testing, depending on specific quality assurance requirements. The varnish coating machine is introduced to apply a protective coating to the tubes, safeguarding them against corrosion and external elements. This coating enhances the longevity and durability of the tubes, ensuring they meet industry standards. An end cropping machine is then employed to finalize tube ends, ensuring they are precisely cut and shaped according to specifications. If threading is required, a threading machine is brought into the process to add threads to the tube ends. The final step in this stage is the power tightening machine, which secures threaded ends, completing the tube preparation for use in various applications. The manufacturing process of pliers begins by heating the raw material to 1000 degrees Celsius. This high temperature makes the steel malleable for shaping. The forging process involves three die pressings. The first die press shapes the general outline of the pliers, followed by the second die press, which refines the shape further. Finally, the third die cuts out the blank form of the pliers. After forging, the technician grinds the front side and jaws of the pliers to achieve the desired finish. Lathing. After the forging and grinding steps, the pliers move on to the lathing process. Lathing involves the use of a lathe machine, which rotates the pliers at high speed while a cutting tool removes excess material to achieve the desired dimensions and smoothness. The lathe machine allows for precise shaping and finishing of the pliers, ensuring that they meet the required specifications. Assembling. Following the lathing step, the pliers are ready for assembly. A technician inserts a rivet into the broached hole and then presses it to assemble the pliers securely. This assembly process ensures that all parts are properly aligned and connected. Heat treating. Once assembled, the pliers undergo a heat treating process. Heat treating involves subjecting the pliers to specific temperatures and controlled cooling to maximize their metal strength and hardness. Surface treating. After heat treating, the pliers undergo surface treatment. A technician bathes the pliers in a rust inhibitor solution to protect them from corrosion. This treatment helps prolong the lifespan of the pliers. Subsequently, the pliers are dried, ensuring that they are ready for the next stage of the manufacturing process. Testing. The entire batch of finished pliers undergoes sample inspection by Jonesway Professional Quality Control Engineers. Manufacturing process of socket raw material. Every Jonas Way socket is crafted using premium steel sourced from Taiwan China Steel Corporation, the leading steel manufacturer in Taiwan. The high quality steel material enhances the durability and performance of the final product. Cold forging. The coiled steel is first straightened and then cut into short billets. These billets are then subjected to the cold forging process. Cold forging involves shaping the metal at room temperature using high-pressure dies. The billets are placed in a forging press, where they are subjected to intense pressure. This pressure deforms the metal and molds it into the desired shape of the socket. Lathing. 
Lathing is a machining process used to shape the socket rim. A lathe machine is employed, which rotates the socket, while a cutting tool removes excess material to create the desired shape. The technician operating the lathe carefully sculpts the socket rim, ensuring precision and accuracy. Knurling. Knurling is a process that adds texture and grip to the surface of the socket. It enhances the ergonomics and usability of the final product. Roller stamping. Roller stamping is employed to add the Jones Way logo and item number to the socket. The socket is placed on the twin roller stamp, and the logo and item number are engraved onto the surface. The twin rollers carry the engraved design, and as they rotate, they transfer the design onto the socket. Heat treating. After the roller stamping, the socket undergoes a heat treating process. This step maximizes the strength and hardness of the metal. Sandblasting. The socket is subjected to a sandblasting procedure to clean the carbonized surface. This process optimizes the effectiveness of the subsequent surface treatment. Grinding. The socket then undergoes a series of grinding processes to achieve a smooth surface texture. This step maximizes the effectiveness of the plating process. Plating. Following the grinding process, the semi-finished socket goes through a plating process. The factory employs a specially designed plating technique that ensures effective deposition of the plating material on the tool's surface, resulting in a perfect surface treatment. Testing a professional quality engineer conducts sample inspections on the entire batch of finished products. At the heart of China's metal zinc production lies the intricate process of zinc smelting. In the industrial landscape, witness the transformative journey from ore to gleaming metal within the confines of a PKU Pioneer smelter. Here, advanced technology takes center stage as enriched oxygen is deftly injected into non-ferrous metal smelting furnaces. This ingenious technique not only reduces fuel consumption but also amplifies output while minimizing emissions, marking a leap towards efficiency and cost effectiveness. PKU Pioneer's prowess in constructing over 30 VPSAO2 plants underscores its commitment to advancing the metallurgy of non ferrous metals, encompassing copper, lead, nickel, zinc, tin, and gold. The manufacturing process of church bells at the Whitechapel Bell Foundry is a fascinating journey that transforms raw materials into timeless instruments of sound. The foundry, known for its historical significance, stands as the birthplace of iconic bells such as the Liberty Bell of America and Big Ben. The process begins with the transformation of bell metal into liquid form through the intense heat of the furnace. Bell metal, a bronze alloy composed of copper and tin, is meticulously crafted to ensure the purity of the mixture. The molten metal is then cleansed of slag, the impurities that rise to the surface, ensuring the final product is of the highest quality. The shaping of the bell takes place in a handmade clay mold, divided into two parts known as the cope and the core. The coke sits over the core, creating a loose-fitting giant thimble with a gap between the two clay sections. This space is where the molten bell metal is poured, giving shape to the bell. Any excess metal is poured into ingots for future use. The bells are cast on Fridays, left to cool over the weekend, and on Mondays, the workers eagerly retrieve their creations from the molds, breaking away the dry and crumbly cope. An interesting historical note is that this foundry is where the Liberty Bell and Big Ben were cast. The latter, weighing a colossal 13.5 tons, posed a unique challenge requiring the enlargement and shaping of the foundry door for its extraction. 
Unlike such giants, the bells in question do not face such constraints. With some skilled maneuvering, the top of the heavy iron housing is lifted away to reveal the clay-covered bell within. Following casting, the bells undergo tuning, a critical step to ensure they produce the desired notes. An instrument measures the different tones a bell can produce, and little bits of metal are shaved off as needed by a hard steel tooth. This precision in tuning was not possible in the past, highlighting the advances in bell manufacturing. Once tuned, the bells face the journey to their final destination, the belfry. Volunteers, unafraid of heights, utilize chains and pulleys, along with the aid of an electric winch, to hoist the heavy bells to their lofty positions. In contrast to the past, where manual labor or horsepower was required, modern technology has significantly eased the process. The final steps involve securing the bells in their designated positions, attaching the clapper with utmost care, and installing the bell wheel, a heavy wooden frame that holds the bell rope. The bell ringers, or campanologists, play a crucial role in bringing the bells to life. With passion and precision, they pull the ropes, setting the bells in motion, and creating the resonant, beautiful sound that has echoed through the British countryside for centuries. This section is a detailed description of the manufacturing process of a screwdriver. Making screwdriver blade, slotted. The process starts by taking coiled steel and flattening the steel tip to the correct slotted size. The edge is then trimmed off and the flattened tip is ground to shape. Making screwdriver blade, Phillips, the beveled crosspoint of the Phillips drive code is precisely cut using high-precision knife mold machinery. The technician checks the drive code to ensure the screwdriver tip meets the standard. Making flange groove, the technician creates the flange groove on the opposite end of the tip. The flange groove is designed to lock the screwdriver shaft into the handle. The twin flange groove design ensures a firm embedding of the screwdriver blade into the handle, increasing product endurance. Heat treating. After making the flange groove, the screwdriver blade undergoes a heat treating process to maximize the strength of the metal. Sandblasting. The screwdriver blade is subjected to the sandblasting procedure to clean up the carbonized surface. This process enhances the effect of the surface treatment.
plating. The semi-finished product goes through a plating process. Jones Way utilizes a specially designed plating technique that ensures effective deposition of the plating material on the tool surface, perfecting the surface treatment. Injecting Handle The plated screwdriver blade is placed into an injection mold, and a special material is injected to create the handle. This process firmly embeds the screwdriver blade into the handle. Jones Way's color handle design uses different colors to distinguish different drive codes, making it easier for end users to find the appropriate screwdriver. Testing. The entire batch of finished products undergoes sample inspection by Jones Way's professional quality control engineers. Printing. Once the screwdriver has passed quality inspection, the technician prints the size and drive code icon on the bottom of the handle. This feature allows users to identify the size and drive code without picking up the screwdriver. Packing. After passing quality inspection, the finished products are ready to be packed for delivery. Bereda, based in China and recognized as the primary choice of 20 Fortune Global 500 enterprises, stands out in the manufacturing of rolled steel balls. With a rigorous quality control system, the company ensures the excellence of each steel ball produced. Boasting an impressive annual output of 200,000 tons and backed by 30 years of exporting experience, Bereda has become a leading force in the industry. Manufacturing hot rolled steel balls through rotary cutting and roll forging processes, Bereda guarantees fast delivery, large scale production, and unwavering quality. This makes them an ideal choice for entities engaged in long term procurement strategies. The shift from traditional cast iron balls to rolled balls in ball mills has been pivotal, especially in high-capacity mills used by large-scale metal mining ventures globally. Bereda's annual steelmaking capacity of 500,000 tons for various forged products enables the customization of raw materials according to specific requirements. With advanced heat treatment technologies introduced in their steel ball business since 2015, Bereda has earned the trust of over 10 companies listed in the Global Mining Top 40 by PwC. The production of 120mm steel balls involves a specialized process using the D120 skew rolling mill machine, a key component in this intricate manufacturing system. Operating in Armenia, the skew rolling mill is tailored for grinding steel balls of various materials, finding applications in diverse industries such as mining, gold extraction, copper processing, and more. This state-of-the-art machine plays a pivotal role in the metallurgical and mining sectors, as well as in cement, thermal power, and magnetic materials industries. Its versatility extends to coal water mixtures, pellets, superfine powder, slag, fly ash, calcium carbonate, and quartz sand processing. The skew rolling mill is particularly designed for the precise formation of steel balls through its rolling mechanism, ensuring uniformity and quality. As an integral part of the grinding ball or rod milling process, the skew rolling mill enhances efficiency in material processing. Its widespread usage underscores its importance in facilitating the production of steel balls vital for various industrial applications, contributing to the robustness and reliability of materials used in critical sectors.
The manufacturing process of pipes involves a series of specialized machines and equipment that play crucial roles in shaping, welding, and finishing the pipes. Magnet Lifter This equipment is used for lifting and handling raw materials, such as steel coils or plates, with the help of magnetic force. Edge Milling Machine The edge milling machine is employed to mill the edges of the steel plates, ensuring that they are smooth and precise. Pre-Bender Machine the pre-bender machine is utilized to curve the edges of the steel plates before they are formed into a cylindrical shape. This pre-bending process facilitates the subsequent bending and welding steps. In feeder machine. This machine assists in feeding the steel plates into the pipe manufacturing line in a controlled and synchronized manner, ensuring a continuous and efficient production process. JCO Press Bending Machine The JCO Press Bending Machine is a key component in forming the steel plates into a cylindrical shape. It applies pressure to bend the plates into the desired curvature. Turning Transfer Car The turning transfer car is responsible for transporting the formed pipes from one manufacturing station to another. It facilitates the seamless movement of pipes within the production line. Tack Welding Machine Tack welding involves temporarily welding the edges of the pipes to hold them in place before the final welding process. This ensures that the pipes maintain their shape during the subsequent welding steps. Inside Welding Machine The inside welding machine performs the internal welding of the pipes. It welds the seam along the length of the pipe from the inside, creating a strong and secure bond. Back Bead Cutting Machine After the inside welding process, the back bead cutting machine trims and smoothens the welded area to achieve a uniform surface finish and remove excess material. Outside Welding Machine this machine is responsible for the external welding of the pipes. It welds the seam along the outer surface, completing the welding process and ensuring the integrity of the pipe. Four-way machine. Expanding machine. The four-way machine, also known as an expanding machine, expands the diameter of the pipe to meet the specified dimensions. This step is crucial for achieving the required size and shape. End facing machine. The end-facing machine trims and squares off the ends of the pipes, ensuring that they meet the specified length and have a smooth and even finish. The washing device cleans the pipes, removing any residue or contaminants left during the manufacturing process. The X-ray test machine is employed to inspect the welds for any defects or irregularities. Turning conveyor. The turning conveyor assists in transferring the pipes to different orientations for various processes, the vanish coating machine applies a protective coating to the pipes, safeguarding them against corrosion and enhancing their durability. Open die forging, also known as free forging, is a drop forging process where metal is deformed into desired shapes without any limitations between the top and bottom anvils. Unlike closed die forging, open die forging allows for flexibility in shaping and operates with relatively simple production equipment, resulting in lower costs. This forging method is particularly suitable for heavy machinery equipment and plays a vital role in producing important parts.
One of the key advantages of open die forging is the elimination of defects found in casting blanks, such as shrinkage, gas holes, and porosity. As a result, products manufactured through open die forging exhibit higher mechanical properties. However, it's important to note that the shape and dimensions of open die forgings are primarily controlled by manual operation. Consequently, the size accuracy of the products is relatively lower, requiring larger machining allowances and higher working strength. Therefore, open die forging is mainly employed for single and low volume production. Open die forging equipment consists mainly of forging hammers and hydraulic presses. The commonly used forging hammers include air hammers and steam hammers, while hydraulic presses utilize static pressure produced by liquid to deform the blanks. Hydraulic presses are particularly necessary for producing large forgings. The basic open die forging process encompasses various operations, including ip setting, drawing out, punching, bending, torsion, mismatch, cutting, and welding. Drawing out, also known as elongation, involves reducing the cross-sectional area of the blank while increasing its length. This process is commonly used for forging rod and shaft parts and can be carried out on a flat anvil or by drawing out on a core shaft. The latter involves inserting a core shaft into a punched blank and gradually drawing it out to achieve the desired length while maintaining the same inner diameter. This method is suitable for sleeve-type forgings. Bip setting is a forging process that reduces the height and increases the cross-sectional area of the blanks. It is often employed to produce gear blanks, ring blanks, and more. There are three types of upsetting, completely upsetting, end upsetting, and middle upsetting. Each type is used based on the specific characteristics of the forgings and the desired outcome. Punching involves creating holes in the billet by either rushing through the material or creating unthreaded holes. Bending is performed to shape the forging using specialized tools or molds. Cutting divides the billet into sections or removes a small area from one end. Mismatching refers to moving part of the billet a certain distance while keeping the axes parallel. This technique is commonly used in forging crankshaft parts. Like any manufacturing process, open die forging can experience defects. Some common defects include cracks, which can occur due to poor billet quality, insufficient heating, low forging temperature, improper cooling methods, or inappropriate forging techniques. Other defects include depressed deformations on ends and cracks along the axis. These issues need to be addressed to ensure the quality and reliability of the forgings.